Hello and welcome back to Galactic Goddess Podcast. I'm your host, Rada Nilia, and today we have a very special guest, my co-host for Lemuria Ascension, Mother Earth, Maya the Shaman. Welcome. Thank you, Rada. It's good to be interviewed by you. <laughs> well, we're here to celebrate Maya's birthday. Today is her birthday. Happy birthday to you. Oh, thank you, Rada. <laughs> Happy birthday to my ancestors too, and to the generations that has come after me. So that is how I was born on planet Earth. <laughs> Beautiful. We'd love to just have a chit chat with you about about your work, about your book, and about your divine mission. Could, do you want to just jump in and share with us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Well, I'm an author and a healer and I've been involved in the Awakening Starseed books volume one two and three and many other books that you Rada Publishing House have published and that I just came up with the book uh, Infinite Cosmic Records Sacred Doorways to Healing and Remembering that uh, people who are interested can pick it up in Amazon or get it from me if you want it to be signed but um and I'm continuing to write. Oh, thank you, Rada. That's, that's nice. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I'm writing a book about Don Pedro, uh, my mystical uh, great-great-grandfather, a Lemurian shaman, a galactic Lemurian shaman, because I just discovered that uh, he is also from Sirius, uh, the planet Sirius, which is the brighter star. And um, we can see it uh, on our planet Earth. Uh, and I also discovered that I also came from Sirius. And so are you, Rada. <laughs> That's what the discovery came through. And today, because I am here again for another one year that extended the grace from the universe to be here on planet Earth, uh, I'm 67 years old. And my placement on this planet is to speak my truth and to be a conduit for my ancestors, especially for my Lemurian ancestors, because I have um, Don Pedro to guide me throughout this whole entire time. And I am very grateful to also to my ascended master, Sri Sri Ananda Murtiji, who has been also my guide. So with this ascended masters, especially you know, my book, Infinite Cosmic Records, has been guided by Don Pedro and, and uh, Ananda Murtiji. So I am here to be a conduit of the light. And it's a work that uh, I came here in this lifetime. And so I'll just keep uh, helping those who need my assistance and uh, provide as much as I can according to the capacity that's given to me by the creator of the great universe. Beautiful, Maya. And so um, do you want to tell us a little bit about your background, where you're born, uh, about your, you know, growing up in the Philippines, your childhood, your connection to the enchantment, and also, um, you know, the many tragedies that you've experienced. That's a lot. So you choose. It's a lot. I, I'm going to start with the, the basic, which is um, I was born in the Philippines called Los Baños Laguna. And uh, just around that area is Mount Makiling, which is the mountain that the goddess Maria Makiling resides. And there's so much information and uh, in the Philippine history in the past that was said about her. But um, first and foremost, well, actually, Maria McKilling is uh, the chapter that I have written in the stories of the goddess, uh, which you are going to be going to Barnes and Noble. So maybe you'd like to talk about your next appearance in ba Barnes and Nobles. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm so glad you're in that book and Maria McKilling is such a incredible goddess to bring forward um so we've been invited to Barnes and Nobles to share all of our collection of books the new releases and everything and I think it's very special because you know we're living in such changing times right now a lot of stores are closing you know it's like we don't know what the future holds and it seems to me a lot of these big, big, beautiful, you know, chain stores are 
closing, but anyhow, we're really celebrating. We've been invited to come in and to share stories of the goddess, Awakening Starseed series. Um, we're going to bring your Infinite Cosmic Records book, uh, Energy Healing and Soul Medicine, um, Pillars of Light, Stories of Goddess Activations, and so on and so forth. So we're really going to be honoring and celebrating this time during these changing times uh, we just have to take the gifts that we've been given and really celebrate them and, and honor them because we don't know what the, what the future holds. So, um, but we do know that the spiritual path, the path of the divine is the glue that keeps us together. I'd like to speak on that because your life was filled with a lot of, a lot of, of tragedy you know and um this the spirituality and that divine path that you chose was the glue that kept you moving forward because most of your family is deceased so would you like to share anything about that yes um uh, so th the death of my father when I was 17 years old, the death of my mother, when I was in my 25th year old, the death of my brother and my sister, um, and aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandpas. So in the immediate family, I am the matriarch that was left. The, the one in the immediate family, I am the eldest in this family that I have with, with my children and my grandchild. So it it has been a, a, a very challenging path huh? because we migrated in America, my mother and I, when my father died. And actually the death was also traumatic because he was lost in the sea and the, the ship was taken by the storm. It sunk in the ocean and the Red China Sea. And uh, that was very traumatic for the entire family. And then my mom... Um, when we came to America, just a few years after, she died of uh, bone cancer, which was because of the World War II that took place in the Philippines. She got very sick from that. And for a long time, she hid her illness from us and discovered it just at her last moment, uh, which is very traumatic. Huh? And as well as my sister and my brother. So um, I learned so much from the the death of you know immediate family members that life on earth is not the ultimate. Yet we are shifting and changing. But what kept me going in spite of all the shock and traumas that has gone through, you know, the, the stages of my life is to hold on to my spirituality. I learned meditation. I learned um, how to accept what's coming and what's going and, uh, and discover the resilience within me. And so this, this is something that uh, I have built uh, slowly but surely in my system and realized that with the help of the guidance of spiritual master, ascended masters, and my ascended Lemurian, Great great grandfather Don Pedro, who is a very mystical uh, shamanic galactic being, I'm able to go through a lot more. And this is just a few of the many things that <laughs> I will write eventually in my book uh, called Descendant of Lemuria. And but right now I'm writing about Don Pedro because he's a mystical being, and I'd like people to to really know a little bit more about Lemuria and uh, share information about that as a descendant of Lemuria. Beautiful. I really love this book. You share so much um, about past lives and, you know, I'm going to show the cover how beautiful it is. Um, but, you know, it, this book is so beautiful because like you said, you know, this, this, earthly experience is just that it's just an experience and it can be very traumatic and I think everybody has experienced so much trauma really um but the truth will set you free mm -hmm. and this book is really a liberation factor in um coming to terms with the fact that we've been around the rodeo a few times and 
you know, we're no newbies here and that, uh, you know, we actually can learn so much from our experiences, whether they be good or bad, uh, regardless of, of, of the context, there is always something to learn. We are always evolving. And, um, and sometimes, you know, it, it, it is those tragedies that break our, break us open, right? Break your heart open. And you give so much to your clients in the, in the healing work that you do, you have so much love and compassion, but I think if you had, hadn't been through all of that and cried so many tears, you would not have the depth, you know, to understand that everyone has a grief in their heart somewhere from something, whether it be this life or past life. And I think that as, as, as horrific as it was, the, those are sacred initiations, right? Like death is a sacred initiation to really appreciating and honoring life. Yeah, that's right. So this book, Infinite Cosmic Records, that uh, you're showing them is uh, is about uh, visiting their their past uh, mm -hmm. and the, you know reg regaining uh, the current control over their current life because the past is not uh, separate uh, from the current moment uh, you know there's many things that happens to us uh, and then we come to earth to to uh, ride that wave again so that we can clean it up uh, and uh, the process can sometimes be very confusing if you don't have any understanding about it. So this book really portrays a deeper understanding about reincarnation in your past lives and your current life and how to go about this if you know how to handle it. And, um, you know, the sharing is uh, done so that uh, people can read stories about those other people who has gone through the infinite cosmic records. These are the sacred doorways to healing and remembering their incarnations on planet earth. And sometimes some of my clients even were, were uh, from other star nation. And so it comes up uh, during our session and um, it's not a surprise to them because they already have a lot of um, information beforehand uh, from their dreams, from waking up and meeting their people or their guides uh, that is not of this world, of not of this realm. So it's a very special book because it's, I ask my clients, can you please write your experience about the journey that you have taken with me in Infinite Cosmic Records. And so uh, they did, and they said yes. So their stories, I have about, uh, I think, 18 or 60, I don't know, uh, 18 clients probably that's in the book that said yes. And so um, they're there, and you can read their personal stories. I don't have to tell you. You can search for yourself, and if you'd like uh, unusual stories of past lives, this is the book that you'd like to get uh, because uh, you'll find some gems, hopefully, in all the stories that has been written. Sure. So I appreciate you, Rada, for um, being uh, the, the founder of Rada Publishing House because it allows this kind of stories to be um, received. Otherwise, we don't have a place to you know, to allow this consciousness or this information or the healing work that we do for people to understand why we do what we do and the value that is involved in this uh, in this book, sir, in this uh, healing work that we do through you. So thank you for for being the conduit for that. Thank you, it's an it's an absolute honor. There, that is what I've always dreamed is um, bringing bringing forward the voice of the soul through storytelling, and that's why. I got into producing and that's why I believe in the power of story when it, especially when it's coming from our heart and soul. Um, you know, I think the heart is something that is not honored in this earthly plane as much as it could be. Like we really bypass the experiences of the heart mm -hmm. and, um, 
And I really appreciate how everybody poured their heart into this book too, to share their stories and to be so authentic. And even if it's vulnerable, I'm in the book too, by the way, guys. Um, I forgot which chapter. I'll have to look it up again. <laughs> but you can find my story too, because I, I went through the Infinite Cosmic Records. And um, you know what I, th I thought afterwards? Because when we went through my session, I saw a indigenous woman who um, I saw twice, two different indigenous women from different cultures. And one of them was by the stream of water. Remember, I, I mean, maybe you don't because you probably you do so many sessions, but anyhow, it stuck out to me. And, you know, we, we have we've have been having these water wars lately with this mm. contaminations of these streams and the woman she was an indigenous elder was saying water is life like it's the most important thing we really have to honor and protect the water the water water is what we are when we poison the veins of the water these streams of consciousness these streams of mother gaia these are her veins but they're also our vein it's also our body too so we are our bodies are reflected in the earth and how we treat her um mm -hmm. And then, and then I went to another sacred place, which I'll have, I'll have you guys read the book, but, you know, and another indigenous woman who was really saying that it's important that we protect, mm -hmm. that we, this is before all the stuff unfolded, that we, that we have our gardens. She didn't say that exactly like that, but that we should be, that we, she had an artichoke, you know, and that that's like a healing elixir it also has to do with a heart peeling away the 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 thickness of our heart because in the center of an artichoke is the soft most beautiful part you know of that and so um many of us have these hearts that have been you know jaded or thickened or uh, protected or shielded and um and we get to live life when we get to unveil our heart, you know, in a safe, in a safe way. So that was a beautiful message that came through. Thank that, you. That was a great story, by the way. And I think it's worth reading Rada's story in the book. So I'm hoping that you get the experience, uh, the kind of healing work that we have entered into infinite cosmic records. And Rada, can you please tell uh, where this event is happening? Because uh, I, I only heard it today. So absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So I just looked it up. It's called a search a, in search of a simple life chapter 19. That's my chapter. Um, so it's July 22nd at 2 p.m. You know, 222. And uh, it's going to be in Chino Hills, California. And we're going to be we are invited to bring all of our books and any of the authors that that are in you know southern california or want to fly in you're welcome to come and be part of this because it is very special these are these times are changing like i said and um it's important to celebrate you know just celebrate like really honor the moment honor the opportunity and uh, I'm so grateful to be bringing your beautiful book and we're gonna have a beautiful big poster with all of the books. So it's gonna be a very special event, but um, going back to you and your, and your history and shamanism and being, being from Maharlika, you know, it's interesting because Maharlika Philippines, they do not, really talk about the indigenous shamanism like that's something that's been completely wiped off of the conversation in fact it's it would be quite offensive to many people because of the indoctrination so i like to just have a conversation how did you come back to your true indigenous roots your true shamanic roots and 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 why has has shamanism been wiped out from our history well you know the philippines has been colonized for where when the spanish came about 500 years ago but then it has been colonized completely 300 years now 
So it, it has a deep rooted colonization that took place, which created a lot of suppression and a lot of depression amongst the people, a lot of poverty. The history has been burnt through books that has been written. Um, it's one of the richest nation at one time on planet Earth. They have so much gold. And when they have discovered through um, the artifacts that they have found in the Philippines and some other books that has been written in other countries that it showed that the Philippines was a great nation in the beginning of time before the conquerors came. And they were surprised to see that they were all literate people that used to live in the Philippines. They have a real rich culture and very spiritual people. So um, that has been all covered up. It Now people have become less uh, acquainted with their past history. My interest is to bring forth uh, that history back uh, into the current lifetime of the now, because it's an important factor that determines humans, uh, humanity in the Philippines, their identity to be able to resonate with their authentic nature. A lot of the things that has happened in the Philippines has been a cover up of who they are. They don't know who they are, really. They're all confused, lost, because history need to be rewritten according to what is authentic. Huh? And so um, I am here to, to create that. Uh, and I'll start with the book, Don Pedro, to be able to introduce what uh, has been a part of our legacy, because it has been, you know, in the shadow for so long. And uh, I always say that the blanket of darkness has taken over. And, and so now this is the time when we're moving from the age of darkness to the age of light, uh, from Kali Yuga to Satya Yuga, that we are in the progression right now towards light. And that in, in this process, we are able to bring forth uh, the right information to to give awareness uh, of who we are or uh, what our role in this world and how we can contribute in the ascension of mother earth and so we have this program Asc Lemuria ascension mother earth with you that we are uh, wow it's it's pretty intense but it is necessary to bring to bring the right information out uh, so we are the conduit for the truth and that is important uh, Thank you, Rada. Oh, it's an honor. Uh, yeah, you know, hearing about your stories, and I'm not sure if you're open to sharing about how the Catholic Church came to your house and decided to, you know, basically kick everybody out. Is that something you're interested in speaking on? Because yeah, sure. I can talk a little bit about it. Uh, I can also have them eventually read it in my book, but I'll give them a little information that during the colonization, of course, all the indigenous people on planet Earth have experienced the sword and the cross. That's what came to us. And that's what people, if you don't follow it, you either die or you get punished heavily. So this is um, a real sad part of it. But uh, um, people have been pushed, the indigenous people has been pushed to the corner. So what happened is that from them having, you know, owning the ancestral lands, which is, you know, nicely situated and higher up, you know, they pushed them all the way down, especially during the wars and conquering, they pushed them in all the wrong areas. So we happen to be pushed in, in the area where flooding takes place, so when that happened and uh, Marcus has declared that uh, the, the, the unused land in the Philippines can be utilized at that time when I was in the Philippines, it was 1973 or 70 something around that time before I left for America, that um, way earlier, that's way earlier, 19, um, in the 70s, early 70s, my mother have went with other indigenous people and built our homes in the upper portion of the land so we don't get flooded. 
And what happened is that after several years that the land has been occupied by the indigenous people, because it was said that any idle land could be used by the people. And so that's what happened. Over 500 people, uh, indigenous people moved there to create their homes, to move out of the lower lands where every time there's a storm, the water goes all the way up to four or five feet you know, and it it really, it's very, very, very deep. So trying to save ourselves, that's what my mother did. And she built her home there. But uh, soon after, after a couple of years or something like that, after everybody has built their homes already, here comes the Catholic church and they brought their bulldozers and men with machine guns and pointed it in these people, us, us, <laughs> me, myself, and my family, and told us it's time no, for you to you leave the place. Children. Your children. Yeah, I was a child at that time. I was a teenager. Pointing, the Catholic Church sent their henchmen to harass. To harass. Mm -hmm. The lives of families and children. Yeah, and uh, to tell us that take your lot to take all your belongings and move now because they brought bulldozers to bulldoze the entire area where people are living. There was so much pain and suffering. People were crying because they don't know where to go. And why would they just do it right there? And then they did not stop us when we were building our homes. So they knew that we were building homes there. And they said that this is owned by the the catholic land and um the fact. and it's called the valley gold so uh that that was a little bit higher up uh, on the valley gold where we we created our homes because that's where the plot cannot reach there it always goes to where we live which every time there's a storm you know we get we get drowned in this place, <laughs> pretty much. So what they have done was so cruel. And so um, it's again, it's a form of conquering, right? Mm? Because when you don't want people to advance, to uplift their spirit, their human lives, and keep them always in poverty and drown them in their misery and sadness, they can control people easily. And so that's a part of that, uh, to control people. They knew that this is what they're going to do. It's all a schematic planning that they have done to us. Uh, and this is not the only place that they have done this. It's it's in many, many areas where they burn villages uh, or, you know, they kill, you know, the other tribes, uh, up, uh, especially the Muslim in, in the Muslim in the South. So they create all kinds of havocs. Uh, and God. They, <laughs> that's not yeah. the, I don't think that's what the creator wants. The creator does not want war. The creator does not want poverty. The creator does not want pain and suffering. Human existence was not it, it, the per the sole purpose of human existence was not for pain and suffering, for overlords of many kinds with many names, whether it be religion or governments or what what not. I mean, that is not holy. That is not divine. That is not compassionate. That is not how you would treat your neighbor. And um, I can only imagine the the deep inconsolable pain that you and, and, and your family went through. How did you, how did you cope with that serious trauma? Well, you know, um, for me, I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. My mother and father have suffered through that. And, you know, a lot of uh, heartaches, uh, and severe depression that took place because imagine having someone to just destroy your home. Your home is your sanctuary. That's where you're sheltered and that's where you live your life. But that was destroyed. So it was difficult. So that's when my father has to get a job in another place, which is the ship shipping industry. And that's where... A year after of him working there, the ship actually 
sunk into the ocean. That's another uh, trauma that took place. So I've been tested many times by the universe. How how far can you go to experience from severe poverty, from seeing the, the discombobulated world around me and how to move out of it? And thanks the universe that I got to learn meditation, meditation, affirmation. Those are the things that help uplifted my spirit. And it was not an easy path huh? because um, to, to do the things that I have done as a young girl, I have to rely on my inner GPS. Huh? So whatever my intuition and whatever my internal being is asking me to do is what I followed. And, and the external world doesn't mean anything to me at that point in time. I really shut it down. And I, after shutting it down, I developed many intuitive uh, capacities, uh, or we could say special sensory perception. Um, I have learned to, um, to have to, you know, to, to read people's mind and to have strong telepathic communication. And uh, I, I got the, uh, moving forward to to even developing and seeing through what the future would be like so there's so many things that happen i become very sensitive to sound i i basically i didn't know that i was doing it but i i went deep into my spirituality and that's where the shamanic realm uh came through to me that uh, i have the capacity to do this kind of healing work uh, and that uh, now i am healing people i'm helping people because of their trauma because i know what trauma is like and uh, this is this is the gift that i'm giving to people to be alive up to this this day and time of my life to be able to give the opportunity to write the books that uh, contain truth and messages that uh, people can learn from is is a gift eh? and so i i really um i'm really grateful to be here right now hmm. that's so beautiful i mean talk about turning lemons into lemonade and i think that is the power of transmutation and the power that everyone has that you know whatever difficulties we can transmute and um it's so beautiful. So, th you know, thank you so much for just sharing a little bit about your story. I know it's just a little scratch on the surface, but I'd love to know what are your, um, bir your birthday affirmations or prayers? Well, I asked the great universe to, uh, to, exp to give me some more time to be able to, to really, um, be a conduit for the light, uh, to write my books, to be able to help people, and uh, and to to create my curriculum for uh, Lemurian Code Healing and Infinite Cosmic Records, so that I can share it with people. Because uh, you know we don't know when and how we leave this planet Earth, and if we are our life is extended, that's great. But if we if not, then at least I will leave some legacy behind, and for people to pick up on what I have learned in my lifetime. So thank you, Rada. That is so beautiful. Well, we're in prayer with you um, for all the beautiful blessings. I know you have so much more to share in your books, in your work, and through Lemurian Code Academy. So many people have been wanting to take your courses. So um, the best is yet to come. I believe it, and I know that to be true. We're just getting started. So thank you so much, Maya the Shaman, for coming on. And we're sending you so much love and blessings for your birthday. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, everyone. <laughs> Hope you come to the next time we, we put out our next uh, uh, session with Rada. Absolutely. Yes. Tune in. And also, I'll put all of her links below so you can connect with Maya yourself. Until next time, much love and blessings. <laughs>